So our first guest is Dr. David Creswell. He is the director of the Health and Human Performance Laboratory at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh and a leading researcher in the field of meditation and mindfulness. Nice. So we're excited to have him today. Welcome to TFNN, Doctor. Hey, thanks for having me. A absolutely. Dr. Creswell, is it true that you became interested in meditation in high school? Yeah, I actually, uh, I, um, I, I took a psychology class, and at the same time I also took a class in Buddhism and was just fascinated with the, the mind's capacity to, to influence our health, namely to, to learn how to, to meditate, pay attention on purpose in the moment, um, and how that could translate into these health benefits. And so I... Um, as part of my uh, my high school senior project uh, in psychology, I decided to go and um, measure the uh, the heart rate and, and blood pressure of a meditator while they were meditating. <laughs> wow, that is so, so cool! I know. Yeah. We should all be so lucky to to be exposed to this practice at such an early age. And then from the um, awesome article, by the way, congrats on the article in, the, in Mindful Magazine, the December issue, I encourage our listeners to pick up a copy of that magazine to read the article about you and the work you're doing. But from my understanding, that led you on sort of a, your own quest to study meditation. Is that right? Yeah, you know, I I, um, I, I grew up in Nebraska. There was it's actually not a huge hotbed of, um, of, of meditation practitioners. Um, but nonetheless, there was a, a meditation center there in Omaha, and I, I learned some of the practices and then later went and um, uh, went to a, a Buddhist monastery in France to, uh, to kind of learn about the practice. And, and uh, it was just uh, my first experience with the kind of real living spirituality and practice that's really about empowering people to really pay attention to what's happening yeah. uh, moment by moment. Yeah, I was so curious, actually, you know, which came first in the, the proverbial chicken or the egg, if you will, which came first? Was it you are studying this and, and discovering these incredible benefits, or was your research driven by the personal benefits that you were experiencing? So it sounds like you personally experienced it, and that uh, helped you choose this as the focus of your work. Yeah, you know, they, they've been going hand in hand. I, I guess I did have um, a lot of personal experiences first um, that, uh, really motivated a lot of the, the research that we've been conducting, but um, a lot of it was about this real black box. How is it that just sitting there in meditation can translate into into health benefits? It seems like a real puzzle. Yeah, so. it's so. And, and you yourself and your team have published upwards of eleven papers, and you have proven benefits of meditation for things like immunity boosting, reducing uh, cravings, say for smokers, even decreasing loneliness in older adults. What is, has been the most exciting aspect of your work or finding so far for you personally? Well, I think we've really been able to make uh, headway into this kind of perplex, perplex, perplexing problem of um, you know, how is it that meditation could translate into health benefits. And we're finding uh, through these investigations that meditation is changing the brain of people who practice. Mm -hmm. um, and that in turn is driving changes in how our body is responding to stress. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, to the degree that um, people are experiencing stress in their life and stress is influencing their health, meditation seems to have really protective effects on, uh, on health and well-being. There's, you know, one of the uh, studies mentioned in the article that I believe is not quite published yet, forgive me if I'm wrong, but um, you are studying a group of chronically stressed individuals, unemployed adults, which, let's face it, that's a large group in today's economy, you know, but um, mm -hmm. it says that after only three days of a mindfulness-based stress reduction program, um, brain scans showed changes in their brains. Is that true after only three days? Yeah, it's three days, although, um, as the participants in that study will tell you, it was a pretty intensive three days. We brought them into a residential retreat center, so they come in on day one at 8 a.m. in the morning, and we basically have them practicing, you know, 8 to 12 hours a day for three straight days, mm -hmm. um, you know, with an instructor and with a group. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a, a fairly intensive dose of meditation practice, and the reason we did that is that when you recruit high-stress individuals, they're really hard to to retain in our studies. After eight weeks, they have so much other stress going on in their life, it's hard to, to sit down and practice. And so we said, okay, we're going to give you a three-day vacation where you can come into the retreat center and just learn and practice meditation. And they really they really liked this type of uh, format, even though it was pretty demanding. Did they? Did, did you have, how many of them try to run out? 
How did they what? How, how many are trying to run out of the room? <laughs> <laughs> we, we had one participant that after the first day said, I, this is way too much, um, and, and elected to, uh, to lead the study. But everyone else stuck it out, and, um, you know, it was tremendously challenging. I mean, you can imagine just sitting there and doing meditation for just a minute or two, you notice that your mind sort of wants to run off. And oh, there's, there's no that. doubt. I mean, being there all day is incredible. The, what the cool thing is is that the, the type of stress that these folks had, that was it all different types of stress, meaning not having a job, just personal relationships? What type of stress was pushing on them? Yeah, that's the amazing thing about unemployment is that it pushes all of your buttons. Okay. Um, we found we found with this unemployed uh, group, they, they were dealing with stress from a lot of areas of their life. Um, most prominently, it was that they didn't have a job. And they yes. were, we, we recruited, these were people that were job-seeking unemployed adults. So they were all looking for jobs and couldn't find them. Um, and so they were suffering from stress related to um, not having money and an income source. Right. Um, stress facing the fact that they're really relying on their 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 friends and family to support them during this time, mm -hmm. and stress knowing that, hey, maybe people don't want me in the workforce, you know, that kind of feeling of rejection wow. or worry. That's intense. Uh, yeah. Yeah. About, you know, not being able to find a job. And so all of these things really stacked up for folks, and they were tremendously stressed. And what was pretty amazing and transformative about the study was that, you know, we provided a means for them to really examine their lives in a new way through meditation practice and to come together with other individuals who are facing this similar stressor. I mean, it was just a, a really amazing experience to watch these, these folks come together, do this practice, and use meditation to really transform their relationship to how they were dealing with this kind of ongoing unemployment stress. You know, when you first started, uh, David, the, you started in high school, so, you know, you have a, an amazing resume, and, and you know, your researcher extraordinaire. Um, Many times when I first started this, it was like, you know, I've said this to Allie many times, it's like, you know, hold it, I, I, do I have to be content? And it took me a while to figure out, you know, like, hold it, I want to do things, you know what I mean? So talk to me about, you know, at the beginning of it, and then how you got all your, your you know, your credentials done, basically. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> it's, uh, it, yeah, sometimes there's feel that way where it's, there's a whole lot to do, but... Um, I think that the research really inspires me um, to to kind of keep pushing and, and publish. But um, yes, you know, I've, I've balanced it with um, for for many years. It was trying to do one meditation retreat a, a year, and then to find a, a meditation group that I could sit with regularly that would sort of support and foster my practice. And so, you know, having that as kind of um, you know a place to to develop my own personal practice was really helpful. And then. You know, finding a, a Ph.D. program, a um, graduate school program that would really support me in this type of work was really helpful. I, I had some wonderful mentors that really, you know, helped sustain the research and, and help develop these questions so that, you know, I could I could be successful. And, you know, now the, the tables have turned. I now have my own students that, uh, you know, I get to support and sustain in, yes. in developing these questions. And, you know, I, I, I sort of caught a little bit of uh, the beginning of this program, and, you know, I heard uh, you start with a question of, you know, how is it that meditation is, you know, having all of these beneficial effects? And, you know, we're really starting to, to make steps in this direction and really saying that, you know, stress seems to be a major player in, in undermining our well-being and health. Mm -hmm. And um, meditation seems to be a very powerful, you know, counter means for helping us manage stress and sort of reversing these stress-related effects on well-being and health. So I really see it as kind of a, a stress-protective practice. Yes. And, uh, um, and, you know, the other flip side of that is that meditation isn't going to cure cancer or, um, you know, solve all of your, you know, problems. Um, but it is going to help you manage those problems more effectively, and I think that's important. Definitely. I have to say I was really inspired also. I watched the YouTube presentation about the study you did for reducing loneliness in elderly adults, which, you know, is a growing population. And um, it just excited me for the potential to help to help that group. I mean, you have more and more people living alone and living longer. Um, so I want to thank you for that. I'm going to give my grandma a call. Oh, it's or, huge. Yeah, work oh, it's, with it's, her when I head home it's, for it's, Christmas. It's, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a huge problem, and it's going to be, it, it, there's no doubt about it. Yeah.
So folks, you can find out more about uh, Dr. Creswell on our website, tfnn.com. Or go to alleyford.com and uh, stay tuned. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with Dr. John Denninger of Harvard. Thanks so much, Doctor. Have a great one. Have a safe one.